Hey guys, today we will continue in our series where we go through the courses in FPG Academy. In the previous parts we have finished lab 1 and lab 2 and today we will look at simulation because in lab 3 we will have to use simulation to simulate our designs. If you haven't seen the previous parts you can watch them on my YouTube channel. I have uploaded lab 1 and lab 2 there. And today we will look at the simulation. You can find the tutorial for this video in uh, digital logic simulation and debug under tutorials and we will today do using Questa with test benches. You can use two uh, simulators for um, in quarters and that's model sim and Questa and model sim was used in the previous versions of quarters but in the newer versions Questa is preferred so I will use that and let's begin. I have highlighted some of the parts that I would like to share that I think are important in this tutorial. The Questa simulator is a sophisticated and powerful tool that supports a, a vari variety of usage models. In this tutorial, we will we focus on only one design flow, using the Questa software as a standalone program. So in today's, uh, in today's tutorial, I will not be using Quarters, I will just be using Questa as a standalone program, and we will perform functional simulations with simulation inputs specified in a test bench. So we will have test bench created and we will run it to create our simulation. And in today's tutorial, I will show you three uh, VHDL designs that we will simulate. And the first one will be a simple adder. This is the entity for this adder. We can see that we just get X and Y inputs and we show uh, their sum in S and we will use three files testbench vht that's our testbench file testbench tcl and that's a tcl file that will run our simulation and wave.do and that's a configuration file for the simulation uh, the testbench VHD file is a style of VHDL code known as a testbench. The purpose of a testbench is to initiate a VHDL entity that is to be simulated and to specify values for its inputs and various simulation times. In this case, to modulate to be, uh, to, uh, the module to be simulated is our multi-bit adder, which we refer to as the design under test. Line 5 in the start of the testbench entity, which has no inputs or outputs. So here we have our testbench. And we add component, we add our entity as a component. And you can see the testbench doesn't have any ports, it doesn't have any inputs or outputs. And this is the simulation. So we create a process and in the process we <clears throat> assign some values to the inputs and then we use wait to wait for some time. Now let's see how we can simulate this test bench. So we will do we will go to this uh, we will go to this um, path. So I will go to So I'm currently in the <clears throat> in my digital logic folder. So I will go to tutorial two. I will go to the first uh, um, design, and I will go to Questa. And here you can see we have wave .do that will customize the uh, the simulation. We have testbench.vht. That's our testbench file. And then we have the script that will run the, the, the simulation. And how, how we... So this is our <coughs> uh, testbench.tcl file. It looks like this. So it will quit any simulation that is currently running. It will create a default work library with this command. And then we compile the VHD, VHD source code and the test bench. And then we run the test bench 
and we customize it with wave.do and then we run it for 120 nanoseconds. So we can run this uh, script using this command do testbench.tcl. So I will run it do testbench.tcl. And we can see this is our this is our <clears throat> simulation. And if you look at the entity, we can see that we have X and Y inputs. So here we have our X and Y inputs. And sum sums these sum up these two um, these two inputs. So for example, here we have zero zero. Both of them are zero. So as sum we get zero. Here we have zero zero and a. So sum is a. And for example, here we have a plus a, and that is equal to fourteen in hexadecimal. And here we have our carry in set to one. So, uh, and our, oh, didn't want to do this. So we have a plus a, that's 14, plus our carry in, that's 15. So we can see our <coughs> entity simulation. Here, for example, we can see carry out is set to one and so on. And we can run, we can run command, quit uh, sim and we can quit our simulation and we can look at other other entities so let's read this uh, paragraph the the wave dot do file used for this design example appears in figure six in figure six so this is our configuration so we can see we add some waves, we get we add our inputs, our outputs, and then <clears throat> we configure how we want how we want the simulation to be displayed. Yes. So let's move on to another example. This one will be accumulate, and this design has uh, this uh, this circuit. So, inst uh, so line uh, line 19 to 25 in figure 9 show how to make a periodic signal by specifying just one period. This process gets executed repeatedly because it does not end with a se separate weight statement. So in this case, we uh, again have our test bench. Our test bench doesn't have any input or output ports, but we have our component accumulate. Our <clears throat> component accumulate looks like this we have counter we have register we have x and we every clock from the counter we add the uh, we add uh, the value in the register to x and then we save it again in the register so for example if x is 5 in the first clock we set 5 in the register and in the next clock we say 5 plus 5 in the next it will be 10 plus 5 and so on and this is the test bench that we will now run. In the first one, we have clock and we run. We set clock to zero, then we wait for 10 nanoseconds. Then we again set it to one and then wait for 10 nanoseconds. And this gets repeated again and again. And so in this case, we will have pre period uh, 20 nanoseconds. And in every 20 nanoseconds, it will change to one and zero. And the difference between this process and this process is that in this process, this gets repeated again and again. But here we have wait statement at the end, which means this get this gets to be run only once. And once it gets it it runs to the end, it waits forever. So here we set our clock that will just pause, and here we set our inputs. And now we can try to run this. So I will go. I will go back to. To our entities, and I will go to accumulate. I will go to Questa. And I will go. I will run the. Uh, 
uh, TCL script. And here we can see our simulation. So we have, we have, here we have our input that is 1E. If we show it as unsigned, we can see that's 30. And this is our register. And we can see our register gets uh, incremented by 30. So we, so here, what we are doing is we, this is our sum and we add 30 and then we add 30 again to the register and so on. So 30, 60, 90, 120. And Y is the counter. So it, it gets to be set to 10 and then slowly goes down until zero. And we can see here when, when the counter gets to zero, uh, the register doesn't get, it doesn't, it's not incremented anymore. And here we can see that we set switch nine down to five first after 20 nanoseconds. So here we wait 20 nanoseconds and our Y gets set to 10. So that's this line. And then uh, after another 20 nanoseconds, uh, our switch four down to zero which is our X gets set to 30. So this is 20 nanoseconds. This is another 20. So in total 40. So that's this code and our clock here. That's our clock here. So we can see that it's pulsing. It's going from one to zero and so on. And finally, we will, the last example will be using memory module. It will be very similar to the ones we have used before. So I'll again quit the simulation. And I will go to the last example, which will be display. And again, go to Questa file folder. And we can see we have, we have again our TCL, VHT, and do, wave.do uh, files, but also we have inst mem uh, or this this uh, <clears throat> memory file. This memory, this is for uh, ROM memory and it gets initiated using this file. So let's look at, this is, this is gonna be our code, our entity that we will try to simulate. Here we have uh, memory instance and also counter instance and this counter will be used as address for this memory and the memory will count uh, from the, ad will, the address will be incremented by the counter and it will show on the output some characters a b c and these characters will be shown on the hex uh, hex uh, seven segment display this is the design circuit. So here we can see we have our counter. Counter sends the output to memory as address and the memory outputs data to decoder and to hexadecimal seven segment display. And this is the memory module. This is how the <clears throat> this file looks like, the file that initiates the memory. It looks like this. And this is our test bench. It looks exactly like what you have used before. There is no difference. The only difference is in the test bench TCL file. So here we have a little change. We added some, some lines. Here we uh, check if the fi uh, file to initiate the memory exists. And if it does, then we delete current initiate memory uh, file and we copy the one that uh, the, the 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 one from the entity and here we have some empty block box file that gets deleted otherwise it just uh, yeah which can be optionally be created by quarters software exists in the parent directory if so the script deletes this file because it would cause an error during simulation so we delete some <clears throat> some empty blocks file that and needs to be deleted for the simulation to run correctly. And so let's run this. Again, we do do TCL. And here we can see 
we have clock pulses clock pul pulses from this process then we have reset and we have our counter our counter counts from 1 to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and that's this is our reset and yeah once the reset is set to 1 the counter start starts counting and this is our output and this output gets uh, gets the data from the memory so again very simple simulation and now we will look at how you can we will look at how you can <clears throat> initiate or create the files in your own uh, VHDL and Quarters projects. So setting up, setting up a Questa simulation. The files described above can be used as a starting point for setting up your own Questa simulation as follows. In the folder that contains your VHDL source code to be simulated, make a subfolder named Questa. So in your uh, Quarters project, you create a folder that's called Questa. Copy into this subfolder the files testbench.vht, testbench.tcl, and wave.do. So you copy all the three important files. Then modify testbench.vht to initiate your top-level entity and create whatever waveforms are needed. So <clears throat> you create this file, you create your own testbench, so you import your own component, you initiate your own process processes, and so on. And then you can use an identical testbench.tcl script as shown above, except that you might want to specify a different amount of simulation time for the run command. So you want to maybe run your simulation longer or shorter based on your needs. And you can mod you have to modify the wave.do file because in the wave.do, that's all the way uh, in the beginning of the tutorial, We've shown it here. We add some waves and they are specific for the, the entity. So you have to specify your own waves, your own inputs, your own outputs and so on. But you can use the same configuration as here. And okay, let's read the rest. You can change the wave.2 file manually by editing it with a text editor or you can make use of a commands available in the Questa graphical user interface as discussed is in Appendix A. So we will not read this, you can read it on your own. And that's it for the Questa simulation. And next time we will look at Lab 3 and we will use this um, simulation in the next lab so if you want to see that don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye